Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll solve this great problem from, from NLM. Let's check your understanding. Let's read the problem statement. So we have, so turns of a uniform spring of relaxed length one meter and force constant of 500 Newton per meter almost touch each other. A light glue is applied evenly between each adjacent turn. The breaking strength of the glue is 100 Newtons. The spring is placed on a frictionless horizontal floor and pulled from one of its ends. If the pulling force is gradually increased to a value of 200 newtons, how much will the length of the spring become? We have to determine what the final length of the spring is going to be. So what the second sentence of this uh, question means is that, so let's say this is turn one of the spring and let's say this is turn two of the spring. Now these two are glued to each other with a light glue whose breaking force is given to be 100 newtons. So the thing is, if the force applied to this end of the spring is let's say 50 newton, then there won't be any elongation here. But the moment the force we apply on this end is greater than 100 newton, this glue over here will break and the spring will start extending. Okay, And after that, the spring will start extending. So that is the concept of this problem. So now let's try to draw a diagram. So first thing we need to understand is that the tensile force on each part of the spring is going to be different. Okay, And let's try to understand why is that. So for that, we need to first find the acceleration of this spring towards the right and let's say its acceleration is a towards the right so we can easily find out a by using f equals ma and that would be f divided by the mass of the spring that is going to be lambda l let's say we cut the spring somewhere over here let's say the force that the right part of the spring appears on the left side is let's say t now this t would be equal to the mass on the left side let's call it m times the acceleration a but let's say if we cut the spring somewhere over here and here, let's say the tension that the right part app applies on the left is, let's say, t dash. It will be equal to m dash multiplied by, where m, where m dash is the mass of this end of the spring. Now, clearly, as m dash is greater, right, so the, so the spring force in between the turns of the springs, it increases as we go towards the right. Okay, that's the first thing that we need to understand. As uh, this force F is given to be 200 Newton. And as we go towards the left, the force in between the turns decreases. So there clearly will be some point, let's say it's over here, when the force between the turns is going to be 100 Newton. So let's say that point is somewhere over here. Okay, so here at this point, so the force in between the turns is 100 Newton. Okay, so if we go towards the left of this point, clearly the force here will be less than 100 Newton. So to the left of this line, the force between these turns is going to be less than 100 Newton, which means the glue will not break and these turns will always remain together. Now what that means is that the length of this part of the spring will remain the same and it won't extend basically. So let's say that length is let's say L0. Now we can easily find out L0 because, because the force acting on this part of the spring, we know it's 100 Newtons, right? So now we can just use F equal to MA and say 100 Newtons equal to the mass on the left side that is going to be lambda L0 times the acceleration, which we found out over here, to be F upon lambda L. So if we solve this, you'll get L equal to L0 divided by two, that is half meters or 50 centimeters. Now what that means is that this 50 centimeters of length will not elongate, okay? Because the glues are still intact. Now exactly using the same logic, the part of the spring on the right of this interface will start Elongating because all of these um, all of these turns that were held initially by the glue is now broken. So now the part on the right will start elongating. So the question now is to basically find out the elongation in this part of the spring. And if we get that, our question is solved. So let's try to do that. So just to make this problem a bit easier to understand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this whole scenario into a spring that is suspended from a point on the roof. And the roof itself is accelerating up with some acceleration, let's say A, which we determined to be F upon lambda L. So in Newton's laws of motion, we have learned that if we have a block that is suspended by some point on the ceiling, and the ceiling itself is accelerating with an acceleration of A upwards, we can find this tension by using the G effective formula, right? So in this case, the G effective becomes G plus A, right? And we can simply write T equal to M G plus A, and that is exactly what we'll be using in this case. In this case, the G effective, we can say it is F upon lambda L. Now the roof is at rest. So now all we have to find is the extension in the spring. Now we have another problem. The tensile force in each part of the spring is different. So if I try to find out the tension at this point, it's going to be the weight of the part below this point. So clearly the tensile force here 
is greater than the tensile force here. As the tensile force is varying with this particular height, we have to take a differential element because the small extension in each of these springs is going to be different. So let's say we go down a distance x and if we take a small spring at this point whose natural length is let's say dx, let's say because of the weight of this part of the spring, this small spring of width dx elongated by a distance of d delta. So we went a distance x from here, we took a small spring uh, whose length is dx and we assume that because of the weight of this part, this spring elongated by a distance of d delta. Okay. Okay. So first of all, what is the tension at the height x? It will be equal to the mass of this part of the string times the g effective, right? And what is going to be the mass of this part? So the length of this part of the string is L minus X, right? So the, ma so the mass of that part is L minus X multiplied by lambda times the G effective. And G effective is this thing, F upon lambda L. So this is the tension as a function of X. Now we know if, if we apply a force F on a spring and its extension is X for, because of the application of force as X. So we can write F equals KX. But the problem is we don't know the spring constant of the small spring. And for that, we'll use a property of springs, which basically says that the product of K and L is constant. So it's given that the spring constant for the entire spring is 500 and its length was one meter. This would be equal to what is the length of the small spring? We took it to be dx, right? So it would be dx multiplied by the, let's say the spring constant of that small spring is let's say Kx. So from here, we'll get the spring constant of that small spring that we took as 500 divided by dx, okay? And the force F uh, applied on the spring is going to be the tens tensile force that we just calculated. So instead of F, we can write dx, that is going to be one minus X by L times F. And K, we just calculated it to be 500 over dx multiplied by, what is the elongation? It is D delta, right? So now rearranging the terms a bit, this is the integral that we are left with. So initial value of X is zero. Okay, so now, now this limit is pretty important we only have to integrate it from 0 to L by 2, right? Because the part after L by 2 will not elongate. So we only need the elongation of the part from 0 to L by 2. So we have to set the final limit of X as L by 2 and integral D delta, let's say it's 0 to delta L. So from here, after solving, we'll get the delta L to be 15 centimeters. So this part of the spring, it elongates by an amount of 15 centimeters and our final length will be the one meter, which is like the unstretched length plus 15 centimeters, that is 1.15 meters. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.